away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed, appointed unto men once to die, but after this to judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. That was chapter 9, and a beautiful sunset in Raven Acres. Back tomorrow. Amen. Every time we confess you are God, one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Time to call him out. Hebrews chapter 10. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not very and not the very image of the things. Does that make sense? For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not very. I gotta read it right. Welcome to Devil's Lake. We're here to call him out. We're calling him out. Elijah's here. Where are you? get this on as uh, one famous American said let's roll for the law a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers, once purged, had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So in the old days, once a year, they'd have to go to the temple and make their, make their sacrifices. Year after year, year after year. And then Christ did it once, for all of us, for all time. For if it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast had no pleasure. There said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. So friends and family, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. This is my job. This is why I was born. And as I read this book, the more I read, the more I know. I have something to do with it. And as we come to Devil's Lake and call him out and say, we're here and we're ready to stand against stand against you this year if you have the courage as David stood against the giant I am here with my sword ready ready to serve brave enough to come to your lake then I said lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God 
above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither hath pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then he said, then said he, this is 10.9. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By which we will, by which will we, this is 10.10. By the which we will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. No more do we need bulls and lambs and goats, as we talked about before in the previous chapters, but we have once, in one time, Christ, who had a body made for him, and came written in the volume of the book to do the will of our Father for all of us that have the faith to believe upon him and to cover the doorposts of our minds and our hearts with the last acceptable Passover lamb. 10.11 And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never, ever take away sins. I added the ever. But they can never take away sins. You can kill a billion goats. A billion bulls. It's not enough. One Christ will do it. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times, oftentimes, the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. 10.12 but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. And every once in a while, comes and calls out his enemy at his own lake. It's cracking me up. I didn't want to come here because it's Devil's Lake. And then I'm thinking, maybe I'll be trying to make a point. Call him out. Two guys have to make him mad enough to do it until he does what he's not allowed to do. Touch a hair on my head. Hey. Where of the Holy Ghost and. Hold on. Got a little uh, audience. Stage fright. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. And we're all praying that those days is now. I know it's not the right English, but those days are the latter days, the end times. And we pray that that covenant is now, and it probably started the second that Christ said, it is finished. And from that day to this day, he's been building the body of Christ, the church, one by one, as each one of us wakes up and does our part and comes together. So that would be 1016. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Hearts, minds. And their sins and inequities I will remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. So once you come to him and you have faith and you're covered in the blood, and he writes the laws on your mind and writes the laws on your heart, he says, and their sins and inequities I will remember no more. 10.18 that was 1018, so let's do 1019. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, and even to go to Devil's Lake and call him out, which is not the wisest thing in the world to do. But what is Elijah supposed to do? Restore all things. By a new and living way he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, 1022. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water.
Lucifer was number two, wanted to be number one. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And who promised? That'd be Yahweh and the Holy Ghost through his son who did what he had to do on the cross. And as we come to the latter days and the end of these days, stand here knowing that we're covered and that we can be bold, stand up for the truth. It's an amazing feeling. For we have power over even the devil, who was our friend. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So maybe we could even provoke Lucifer into good. I know Pastor Arnold says we can't, but you never know. He was the, he earned his way to the top. And how many men on this planet have loved women too much and got in trouble? Not forsaking this assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we all see it coming and we watch the signs and you know. We're supposed to watch for the season and this season looks like the season. Is it? We don't know yet. When we see him come, we'll know. For if we sin willfully after that which we have received, the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment. So this is 1027. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under the foot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite the Spirit of grace. So we're given the Spirit of grace, we're given the blood of Christ, and Christ is Yahweh in our dimension. So if we ignore him, continue to sin willfully and just say, you know what, we'll be forgiven, let's just party on. Before you had to have two or three witnesses to put you to death under the law, now you just need the Holy Spirit, he's invisible, he's watching you 24 seven. So, let's do 29 again. Let's do 28 again. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. So even though you have the grace and the mercy, you just go ahead and keep sinning. Go ahead and keep getting drunk. Go ahead and keep not even trying to do good because you say, yeah, I'm just forgiven. Don't worry about it. I'm a Christian. I can do whatever I want because he'll always forgive me. Well, when the time runs out, we'll see. Because if you know him, you're going to have a spirit of conscience change because he writes the laws on your heart and writes the laws on your mind and you know who he is. And if he's your friend and you're making him sad, you're going to know. And if you care, you're going to try to change. You might not change in one day, you might not change in a year. But you're going to try to change, you're going to want to change. And that heart and that faith is seen by him and counted worthy. He didn't say we had to be perfect. He said we had to have faith. Know he's real and to believe this next verse. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. And in Isaiah it says, he looked around and there was no righteousness, so he put on vengeance himself at the end. So let's do 30 right now. For we know that, for we know him. Do you know him? For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
Are you afraid? 